All right, guys, today we're doing the one year review of the open web floor joist system that we used in our build. And I wanna talk you through why we decided to basically pay double the price of any other system in order to have these open web joists. So I'm gonna talk you through the pros and cons and whether or not we would do it again. Okay guys, so this is our own build that we did. We've been in here a little over a year. My family is a home builder. I worked in the production side of building on and off most of my life. And we've always subscribed to the construction magazines, all the home builder, all the American magazines, a bunch of custom builder uh, magazines. We were always looking at that kind of stuff. And I would always see these products, the uh, open web floor joists and thought, why don't we use this? Why doesn't anybody use this? And the answer is, pretty simple because it, a lot of times it's not economically that feasible. It's got to be a custom build. It's got to be the decision of the owner that they see enough benefits in it to use it. So let's talk through the benefits. Why would we pay double and what was double? So first off, a normal drop steel beam system using uh, either nominal lumber or an eye joist system where they got a wooden top and bottom flange and a piece of OSB for the joist instead of these it would have ran roughly $10,000 for all the material at the time that we did this, give or take a couple grand either way. And this is roughly a 3,000 square foot house of finished space, uh, two stories. So our cost was closer to 20,000. So we were very close to being double the price. Why would we do that? What benefits can justify that much of a price increase? So first off, you can't see totally here, but these joists span right from one side of our house, 30 feet wide with no bearing walls, no beams, no posts. They go right from concrete to concrete. And what that allowed us to do is up on our main floor, we have a totally open kitchen, living, dining area. And normally the way that people achieve that on a bungalow design is by having a cathedral style truss and it's the trusses that span it it's not the floor joist and it's only in bungalow applications but we had another story up above so we had a floor we had to to support so for us to get that fully open main floor plan with no walls no beams no post this was really the only way to do it to the total extreme degree that we wanted to now did we have to do that in the basement no we didn't but it offered us the flexibility where what you see now is a totally open space we had a rough layout of where we wanted our walls to be in the future, but we weren't really committed. We didn't know, was that gonna be a bedroom? Was this gonna be open? And so it gave us the flexibility to just say, let's not worry about it. We'll fill it in later once we know how we're gonna use the space. If we have another kid, et cetera, et cetera. And do I need a home office? These kind of things. So the time's come where I'm gonna finish this now. So I wanna show you guys this stuff before we close it up. But in the basement, we have found that there wasn't as many benefits. Upstairs, we absolutely love the openness that those joists provided us and the lack of bulkheads. And in the basement, I think it's very questionable whether our money spent, particularly on this floor, where I probably could have saved about five grand switching out these joists for another style, either nominal uh, dimensional lumber or um, an eye joist product. I think our money might have been better spent down here going ahead and putting a beam in because as it turns out we're going to end up closing this space off anyhow and we didn't know that at the time but it's not as critical I don't think to have this totally open no bulkhead feel in the basement it is nice but there's lots of things that are nice and it's a trade-off of, of limited resources when you're dealing with the amount of money in your budget so all things considered it is great having all of this ductwork, HVAC, electrical run up in these cavities. And that's one of the main benefits. And it was great not having to commit to our layout down here. But all things considered, I think we would do it again on our main floor. And we would probably highly consider using a steel beam, drop beam system or, or LVL and, and saving the money in our basement area. Now, I'm quickly gonna talk over a couple more of the benefits with these things, guys, is like I mentioned that you can hide it so you have totally no bulkheads whatsoever, but that's very labor intensive as well. You're gonna get some pushback from the trades because even though the electrical generally runs through here completely seamlessly, 
your plumbing and your ductwork can have a lot of issues. The return line on the ductwork, especially because of the volumes it's normally bringing back, is problem troublesome to carry through these cavities. So you're gonna get some pushback there and you really gotta pre-plan how you're gonna size your ductwork accordingly and which cavities you're gonna run that stuff through or else you might pay all the money for this stuff and still end up with drop ductwork. And obviously that's just a, not a great use of the money. There's also certain runs of the plumbing trying to hide it up in here that we had to cut holes in the wall from the outside to slide it all through because we had these big long pieces that were just hard to assemble and, and elbows and everything that it, it wasn't really possible to do once all these walls were closed in. So in terms of getting all the, all the services up in there and having no bulkheads, it's possible, but it's difficult and it takes some pre-planning. You're probably gonna get a bit of kickback from the trades. And one other factor that's worth noting, I suppose two other factors, is that this is a very deep floor. This is a 20 inch deep flooring system in order to be able to span that distance. And that makes your floor a little bit thicker and it adds a couple of risers to your stairs. So a normal staircase from the first floor to the second floor with a nine foot ceiling, you're normally gonna end up with roughly 16 risers. We ended up with 18. So we have a very large staircase. It looks nice, but it's a lot to walk and it's somewhat dangerous. We had to break it up with a couple of landings to, to fit it all in and it makes it difficult to fit into a floor plan as well. So consider you're probably gonna add some more stairs to your basement and to your main floor more walking and just more space you got to accommodate for. And the last note is that there is a little bit of bounce. You'll notice that there's just a slight bit of noise that comes with it. It's not as firm of a floor. You, you don't truly feel like it's, it's bouncing like a trampoline or something, but when someone's in the very middle of this floor, if there's any kind of jumping or quick motions going on, you do notice there's a little bit of, just a little bit of bounce. I guess there's no real issues with that. We have a, a vinyl flooring product. I don't know how that would really hold up if you had a uh, ceramic or a tile product, a grouted product out in the middle there. I could see it being problemsome because from what I have seen so far, this just has a little bit more flex than doing it with a beam system in the middle where you don't have as great of a span. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. All things considered, we would do this again on our main floor, considering that was the only way to get the open layout with our two-story house. And we would definitely reconsider in the basement. If you're thinking of using this system, just know that you want the open layout for sure. You're not doing it as a precautionary measure and make sure you're gonna plan how you're gonna hide your services. Thanks for watching, guys. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe. I'm putting out new videos every week. I'm covering the local Peterborough real estate market, but I'm really trying to focus heavily on putting out good quality construction content for you guys to help you understand your house, help you understand the homes you're buying and potentially the homes that you're gonna build or the renovations you're gonna do to the house that you're gonna buy. So anyways, thanks for tuning in guys and we'll see you next week. If you got any questions or comments, put them down below. I try to respond to every comment. See you guys.